every now and then as a speaker, if you've been a speaker or a teacher, you kind of have feelings about the stuff that's coming or whatever you're going to present. And as a person who continues every day to honestly and authentically embrace my calling as a speaker, as a teacher, as a person who's called to minister that which the eternal is trying to bring forth, that's kind of like, it sounds so big. <laughs> it, takes, it takes me time to kind of get situated. And it has taken me a long time to figure out that this really is what I'm supposed to be doing. Like, even though I've been coming here to Soul Center for, you're going into your fourth year, so, We're going so fifth three, year. three, going into your fifth year, so I've been coming here for three years, I guess in June, I think it was, um, in 2015 when I came here around the first time. And the beauty of what I'm looking at is, only possible for you to conceive is if you really look at yourself. The only way you'll understand how remarkably beautiful it is that you're together, that we're here, that Soul Center hasn't gone away, is if you really take the opportunity to see who you are. Because Soul Center could be a former community. There are a lot of communities that don't last this long. You know, it, it doesn't sound like it, it doesn't sound very encouraging, but um, <laughs> the reality is that ministers even, that the average length of a minister's ministry, and I haven't even become a minister yet, is five years. Because of what it takes. And Agape is in this incredible opportunity of transformation and everything is different and uh, we're in a new location at the Saban Theater. And so I must first and foremost give thank yous and greetings from Reverend Dr. Michael Bernard Beckwith. He sends his love every time. Uh, generally, my day when I come here starts at the first hour and a half of my day. I'm at the Saban Theater setting up, getting things go, and I wait till he gets ready to step on stage, and then I go do my thing. And I'm here now with you guys, and he always wants to make sure that you're appreciated and loved by him and the Agape community. You're not a satellite or, or a thing that's a far off, or like one of those satellites that the, and NASA has kind of lost control over, and then they get, hey, India, something's gonna crash on October 12th. Just, you know, give us the parts back. It's not, no, you're, you're very much a part of Agape. And you are the part of the vision that has been seeking to continue to emerge. Agape will have been around 32 years soon. Um, in October, no, in November is our anniversary. And so as I stand here, I'm really aware more than ever of how this community is growing. So I just want to honor you from that place as we get ready to get down a little bit this morning. And again, thank you, Bashira, for setting the tone so masterfully. Because really what we're talking about today is mastery. And so it may not have been her intention to show you and demonstrate for you what excellence looks like when excellence kind of shows up as kind of good. But we're holding for excellence. Yes. And so excellence and mastery requires to say, hey, um... Lacey, Brian, can we shift it a little bit? Can we want to bring that, uh, that, 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 that key up? And then we lie in mastery because someone only wants to bring us their best. Yeah. And so I got a little nugget right before I was, I was coming up here. We're going to get into this. My topic today is answering the call to mastery. And so really... We're going to kind of workshop today, so if you have a cell phone, if you've got a pen and piece of paper, you should pull it out now. Because there are just a couple of things that you don't want to be without when we're done. And so this community has been going on for a long time, and really we want to know in a very real way is if your life is better. Is your life better because Soul Center exists? I don't care if you've only been here two or three times. Is your life better 
because soul center exists. And those of you that have neighbors, you guys can partner up if you, if you need an extra pin. It's not, it's not a sin to have your cell phone out. And so as we start talking about this, it was really inspired by your theme of the month. Your theme of the month, in case you haven't noticed, is the art of allowing. And when I think of art, I very much think of, of what mastery is. And there isn't enough use of that word. There isn't enough implementation of it in our everyday lives. And so when I thought about the art of allowing, we're really talking about giving permission. And so Bashir sang a song that might make some of us a little nervous. To really think that infinite intelligence, to know that God, the great mystery, knows who you are. It's comforting and it's a little perplexing and, you know, it might might be places and we don't want God to know this version of us and might not have want us to see us, you know, yesterday or Friday when we were in our less than best version of ourselves. But see, here's part of the, part of the equation. God doesn't know the limited idea of you. God does not even comprehend limitation. God does not know brokenness or missing. God does not know absence. God does not know these things because you must look at the universal laws that are governing the universe. I'm constantly talking about this. Because a lot of times in New Thought spirituality, in New Thought ancient wisdom, which is the teaching that we embrace, there is trying to negotiate between how we were raised as in our Hebrew Jewish teachings, in our Buddhist teachings, in our Christian teachings, maybe in our Islamic uh, Muslim teachings, and trying to figure out, well, what, how does new thought like wiggle its way through all of this? And really what it does is it casts off all of the human ideas. It casts off all the things that were limited, all of the things that really were customs, really were customs from a, a far begotten time that we've really outgrown. And it casts off limited ideas when people didn't see a world or couldn't conceive of the universe. No matter how many people want to try to bring back flat earth theology. <laughs> there is so much more that there are cosmoses. There are many different universes and many different galaxies. And the creator, that which is behind everything, actually hasn't stopped. Like when they realize that the universe is continually expanding, well, that's it, right there. It is continuous. It has never stopped creating, transforming. So any limited idea of doneness must be thrown away. You can look at instances, like a sliver in time, and then you can see that that is what it was in that period of time. Like you throw a yardstick across the time in, in front of us and you use it as a timeline. You can see moments and you can look at them from the different angles and see what it was like for children and what it was like for women and what it was like for black people and what it was like for people who had a particular sexual identity. You can look at all of those instances and you can see what the world looked like in those moments. But all the way through, there is a constant evolution of thinking, of thought processes, of ideas, of physical capabilities that human beings have. Even if you just look at something like track and field and you look at athletes and runners and jumpers that are jumping further and higher than anything anyone comprehended, that there was an idea at some point that a four minute mile would never ever happen. And now it's happening all the time. This is what we're talking about when we start looking at God, as we start looking at spirit. And so there is a call to mediocrity, and unfortunately, sometimes we answer a different call. Some of us are answering the call to mediocrity. Some of us are answering the call to resistance. Some of us try to put call waiting on God. <laughs> Some of us are screening God's calls because I'm not really ready for that yet. 
I'm not really ready to. We spent the whole last month forgiveness. I'm not really ready. I'm kind of appreciating my anger and angst right now, God. So call back. I'm kind of in my trigger. I'm in my, well, in my experience right now, and I'm good. So call back. Maybe after nine, I'll answer. Some of us are really screening God's calls. It's much easier to not use our voice. To not be the person that speaks up when something needs to be spoken about. So there is a whole lot going on here. The thing about it is, answering the call to mastery is really not an option. We can do things at an average, so-so level, or we can do them on the, on the arc with the growth of greatness. Because every time we take it on, there are opportunities. So Malcolm Gladwell came up with the 10,000 hour rule. How many have heard of that? And so the idea is that it takes 10,000 hours of intentional practice to become a master at anything. So that kind of works out to about 431 days, complete days. And some of us have not yet mastered ourselves. So many of us have been spending years and decades unlearning who we are. So the first place in your notes and in your note taking is, have I mastered myself and what does it mean to be me? Write that down. Have I mastered myself and what it means to be me? So that means, no, I'm not the best version of me as my mother would appreciate. I'm not the best version of me that my father would appreciate, let alone grandmama. <laughs> it is me, meaning with the gifts and talents that I have, do I even know them? If somebody were to walk up to you with an infinite bank account, and say, I am here to fund you expressing your gifts without any withhold. Could you articulate them in this moment and let them know what you're going to do? Yes. If you can't, it's just an opportunity. No judgment. It's just an opportunity. If you are a person who's looking for a soulmate and looking to be in a romantic relationship, planning to get married as we have our couple here today. And you're talking to the person of your affection and they ask you about your dreams. If you cannot now articulate your dreams, there is an opportunity for mastery. Yes, that's homework for you too. <laughs> you should both be, uh, there you go, both be talking about your dreams to each other. It doesn't have to be this fant fantasy. It can be fantastic. It can just be fun. It can be joy. I dream of this life. And it's not an expectation for him to give it to you. I'm giving them a little of what Kim's going to give them. <laughs> it's not with an expectation of him to give it to you or you to give it to her or that you are responsible for her happiness or any of that limited idea of what relationship is. But you will honor and hold the space around her that she may fulfill it because you are consciously holding the space for her to grow to change and transform. You gave me a marriage, I'm not doing the wedding, but you're getting some today. And the other piece is that that's your role for him. And so as we do this, the same thing is supposed to be happening for mothers and their children. Parents are supposed to be creating a space, not a mold. You are not supposed to be molding children into your shape. You're supposed to be creating this space so that the mold that you thought you knew about, and you know your mom didn't know the mold that you were going to fulfill, so let me calm down a little bit. <laughs> <laughs> so you're, you're not going to repeat the same ill-begotten behavior because you're creating this space so that they may step into it and fulfill. It's not you carving out Luke, uh, Han Solo in the, in, the, in the block from Empire Strikes Back. 
you're not carving it out and then stuffing him in there and he's in there all twisted. No, he is the space. And his beingness knows it, and your children, their beingness knows this. So the second thing that you're stepping into when it comes to mastery is this. Am I fulfilling my call? And it's a question that is very wide, right? You're not called to stand in front of Soul Center necessarily and speak and teach. But if you were an elevator operator, and it was 1930, and you were the person that was operating the elevator, taking people up and taking them down. You were getting paid for it, and you were providing for your family. You were actually answering your call. Because you were a good person, you were generous, you were kind, you were thoughtful. There is an idea now, because of, of the way things are set up, that being a janitor or being um, in that type of work is a thumbs down. Even in romantic circles, when people find out that somebody's in a blue collar profession, there's kind of a, uh, uh, except for one of the most beautiful stories, it's kind of how they do it. It's, except for one of the most beautiful stories of the civil rights movement that I, that I saw a, a, a clip of, of some, some adults who were children at the time, and their fathers were a part of the Memphis garbage workers strike. And they used to talk about running home and their, their father coming home smelling like a garbage bin in his jumpsuit and still hugging him and grabbing them because the work that they did provided. And we're not just leaning into this idea of men are supposed to provide and da, 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 da. No, it's not that. It's the calling of how you're able to show up in the world. So what is your calling? That's your third question. Do I even have an idea? Do I have any idea? If I'm screening my calls, am I screening out the best opportunity that I ever could have had? Many of us have stories and testimonies that we can bring forward of things that we never would have chosen for ourselves. Places we never would have gone and we had the best time ever. Anybody? Am I the only one? Let me hear you. I don't know my calling, and I'm not really sure what my gifts are, how am I making it through the world, and what am I doing? And so really, in a lot of occasions, we're running a program. We're running the program that we receive from our family, receive from our cultural, receive based on our gender, our sexual identity, our sexual orientation, our, our national orientation, whether we're German or, or Puerto Rican, or whether we're uh, from South Africa, or whether we're from uh, Russia, wherever we're from. We're running a lot of this stuff. And the opportunity is to have an awakened moment. So when we talk about the art of allowing, what are we allowing? Are we allowing more of what used to be? that doesn't serve today? Are we allowing more of what we were trying to let go of? Are we allowing what we don't want for our daughters, but we're still living it? Are we allowing what we don't want for our sons, but we're still living it? Are we allowing what our, we don't want our neighbors to be doing, but we're steadily doing when our neighbors can't see us? What type of world are we weaving together? So, take a moment, just a moment, for 30 seconds, what comes up for you, write it down, type it, when you think of your gifts and your calling? If nothing shows up, just draw a circle or just say opportunity. Take a moment of silence. Don't negotiate with what comes up. Just allow whatever comes up to come up. And don't say not that. Don't say it couldn't be that. Right now we're not tapping into your mind, we're not tapping into your intellect. You have decided to be here with me today. So you have availed yourself to spirit. So we'll just take a few more seconds just to be with what space is available to us in this world.
and now. For those of you that maybe nothing came up, I really want you to understand what nothing is. So if it was nothing clear or you weren't certain, I want you to understand and I want you to throw away any sort of frustration, any sort of irritation, any sort of judgment you might have for yourself. Because nothing is simply a blank canvas. Nothing is simply, is, is simply a music sheet with no notes on it. It doesn't mean that it's nothing. It's infinite potential. It's infinite potential. If you have something, that is also infinite potential, but it's come into four. So infinite potential or infinite potential come into four. Guess what? You can't get out of this. You know, nah, I didn't have anything. Oh, Jason said it was infinite potential. Darn it. Oh, I had that come up and Jason said that that was also infinite potential, but it came into four. Darn it. I'm not sure. Excellent. Because what we're talking about is not something that we're asking you to do. We're not talking about you making it happen. Our theme of the month is about allowing. And you are going to be a group of people who allow God, maybe for the first time in your life, as you. Yeah, I'm going to say that again. Maybe for the second or third time in your life, you're going to make a commitment to God as you. Say, God as me. God as me. Reveal. Reveal. Now. Now. You're going to say that again. God as me. God as me. Reveal. Reveal. Now. Now. This is a question. Is it possible for God to express as me? Consider that. It already is. Even if there's a part of you that cannot conceive it. Look at your hands. God is existing as your hands. Look at your, your memory and your awareness of your res, of reflection. God has been expressing itself for you, I'm not dating anybody, for at least 16 years. <laughs> God has been doing this for even more years than there are rings on the greatest oak tree. On the greatest baobab tree in Africa. It's the biggest tree ever. Look it up. It's huge. It's wider than this building. And it has been expressing intentionally. And so the opportunities that we are going to harvest from today is, I'm going to specifically check back in next month when I'm back. Mm -hmm. Because the charge that I'm giving you is this. If 10,000 hours is what leads to mastery, according to Malcolm Gladwell, he's a little successful. <laughs> and if that looked like 490 something days, or it averages out to three hours a day for nine years. <laughs> but you're all more than nine years old. And all of you have been doing what you thought was you 24 hours a day. And as Dr. Phil would like to say, how's that lot working out for you? <laughs> I'm here to encourage you. I'm here to encourage you that the key for you right now is to do an apprenticeship in you. You see, all of the great masters, whether they are spiritual teachers, musicians, whether they were artists, they were all students under another master at some point. And they did an apprenticeship in the field. So often Reverend Michael, when he does his teaching, he invites us to find a quality of God to do an apprenticeship in. So what do you want more of in your life? Let's run through some qualities. Joy, not just joy, but joy, <laughs> love, peace, harmony, grace, creativity. Write down whichever one jumps out at you. Grace, creativity, beauty. Take the opportunity to do some time in any of these qualities because these are all the qualities of you. You are here to bring beauty. 
and creativity. I love when Spirit uses me during prayer time to remind myself and the world that creativity is not just in the creative arts. We've needed to be more creative parents. We've been needing to be more creative husbands and wives and partners. We've needed to be more creative in how we use the environment and food and nourish ourselves. Really, science is an opportunity to be creative, to really break down the chemical compounds or the biology, not necessarily to manipulate it, but to see what else it really has for us and how can we nourish the world. It's not just hot in here, it's hot on the whole planet. We've been doing something wrong or out of alignment, and it's the great opportunity of our generation. Yes, everybody that's actually at, alive at one time is a generation. Don't get caught up in the, the millennials and the, the Gen X's and, nah, we're using the same computers they are. We're all doing it, and they're learning from us. In fact, the millennials, if we pocket them over there, have to realize that all their favorite toys were invented by us. <laughs> all of them. <laughs> and so the reality is, you have been called. You could not incarnate if you did not answer a call. In this lifetime, we have been gifted with a greater allowance of consciousness. Because some people were so horrendous that we had to awaken ourselves. Whether it was kidnapping Africans, or whether it was the, the, the solution in Germany, you know, the final solution, or whether it was just the environment and the rainforest just dwindling away, whether it was wiping out Native Americans, the society, people were gone to such extremes that it woke the rest of our ancestors up and they decided that no, this can't be the world that we live in. You can't do this to children. You can't do this to women. You can't do this to someone who identifies differently because of sexuality, because of the culture that they were born into, because of who they are. And so we are waking up into a world that is actually full of masters full of masters of the divine. That is what Soul Center is. That is what we are. And that is what we are growing into be. Yes? Yes. Are you willing? Yes. Are you going to do it? Yes. I'm excited too. <laughs> so let's just take a moment to, to anchor all of that in prayer. There is a great love that abounds. This love has no withhold. This love has no need. It requires neither investment or giving. It just is. It's what is often talked about when we use the term agape, which is a Greek term. And it is the givingness of God. And that shows up as our lives. And so we're anchoring in this moment the word that has come forward. We are not just playing around. We're not just kind of doing a little better. No, we're answering the call to mastery. We know that there is so much more for us. There is so much more in the world because of us. And so I bless our lives. I bless our journey. I bless our gifts. I bless this community. I bless our family. I bless our friends. I bless the vows that we will take. I bless the ways that we will give of our life. I bless our gifts. I bless our talents. I bless life and how it expresses as us. Intimately, personally, and absolutely glorious. The divine idea as our lives. We are not ashamed to, to say yes to mastery. We do not embrace some sort of false humility by denying how spirit is operating as us. And we also are not so fragile that if one door closes, it's the end of the world. Transition is consistent. Change, always. And knowing also the always is God, supporting us, guiding us, availing itself to creation through us. 
embrace this today in a greater way than ever before. We simply allow it to be so. And if you are in vibrational agreement with this, you simply declare with me, and so it is. So it is. Amen. 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 Amen.